What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be giving you tips, tricks, and loadout suggestions so that you can easily solo flawless the Ghost of the Deep dungeon. So this is the second newest dungeon, and it's not even a year old. So a lot of the strategies from last June or late May or whenever it came out still apply. I actually have a really good guide on my channel going over this dungeon in greater detail if you want to watch that. But for this video, I will basically be taking everything that I have learned from running this dungeon a bunch over the last year and give you advice to easily beat it this season. The reason I want to make an updated guide is basically to give you little tips to make things easier and some loadout suggestions for getting it done. Because this season, we have an extremely strong artifact that makes it easier than ever before. That is mainly due to solo operative which buffs all our damage by 15% when we're solo. And Flint Striker is also amazing because we can have Radiant even on non-solar subclasses. And lastly, we have Revitalizing Blast to apply a 15% weaken to a boss with our solar abilities. So with these mods, it honestly shaves at least one damage phase off per boss. And that was always the difficult part of this dungeon, was the extreme health pools of these bosses. So my main piece of advice is to run this dungeon solo first. You can only learn so much from a guide, but you will learn a lot more from actually doing it. You will die in a variety of ways, but those will teach you what not to do. And I spent hours in this dungeon doing testing and stuff, so I can give some advice there to hopefully keep you from dying. I tried a myriad of different damage strategies on both bosses, and rather than showcase them all, I will just give my advice on what works best, and what I would use if I was solo flawlessing the dungeon. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into it. The first encounter is quite boring. You have to kill an ogre which spawns a trail, and we follow the trail a few times and eventually take out a lucent hive. Pay attention to the symbol because we need that when we're done. You then go to the middle, kill the wizard, and hit the symbol. Rinse and repeat this four times and you're done. There's really not much to it, and the more you run this, the more used to the different paths you will get. But some advice to speed it up, you only need to kill the wizards at each spot to spawn the next symbol. You don't need to kill the acolytes. Obviously, they could kill you, but yeah, this will make it a little bit faster if you just focus on the wizards. For loadouts, I went with Ophidia Spathe Hunter, Mantle of Battle Harmony Warlock, and Syntheseps Bonk Titan. You want healing grenades in all cases, and then abuse Ember of Empyrean so that you have constant healing. This will be the theme for the whole dungeon as it is very add dense, so you will need said healing. A solar primary is nice for extending the restoration. After this encounter, you have an extremely long traversal. I don't have a ton of advice here, but on my runs, I actually skip past a ton of the adds with an eager edge sword. If you are not comfortable with eager edge and you want to take out the adds, then you do that. Do whatever you are most comfortable with when it comes to a solo flawless run. If you do want to take out the adds, then Wish Ender is a great option here. Eventually, you will finally be done with the long traversal and you will get to Ekthar, the first boss. This boss has a 40 second damage phase, which starts when you deposit the last vestige of light. You need a weapon that can take down the knight that spawns in quickly, as this makes the green pool on the ground, and this pool gives you the piercing light buff which you need to deal damage to the boss's overshield. Arbalist will one-shot this overshield, and that is extremely handy, so I highly recommend this as an option. However, then you can't use an exotic heavy. So as I said, I tested a ton of different damage strategies here on all characters, and I know what works best and what does not. I tried Arbalist and a fusion rifle with a bait and switch apex predator. It wasn't bad, but this is extremely risky because you can blow yourself up. So I don't recommend this, even on a warlock. Legend of Acrius would be good on a Warlock, but then taking out the boss's shield is a pain because there's no Arbalist. So for Warlock, what I used to get a 3 phase was Arbalist, a Midas Reckoning with Enhanced Cornered and Enhanced Surrounded, and a Bequest with Enhanced Relentless Strike and Enhanced Surrounded. Now, this strategy worked wonders, but I understand not everyone is going to have two craftable raid weapons. And like I said, Acrius is decent if you can figure out a way to get the boss's shield down. You definitely want to go with Well of Radiance here too, because it lasts almost the whole damage phase, and there's a ton of adds shooting you while you're trying to deal damage. This loadout also uses double special, so it's best on Warlock, because you can use the Heat Rises Sun Bracers build to take out all the adds with your abilities. So those are my recommendations for Warlock. For Hunter, this is the only time in any of my dungeon guides that I'm recommending not going with Solar. I recommend doing the Ad Clear Assassin build with Assassin's Cowl on Combination Blow Arc Hunter. This gives you Amplified which is great for getting around the arena quickly, and you can run Arbalist and a 1-2 punch shotgun in the energy slot, and then an Eager Edge Sword. Then for damage, 
Take out the knight and swap to Liar's Handshake and a 1-2 punch shotgun with Tractor Cannon. This allows you to deal great damage to the boss while getting healed when you punch the boss. This strat should result in a 4 phase, but it is a very quick 4 phases thanks to how safe you are in between DPS phases with Assassin's Cowl. I absolutely love this setup. You could also do Assassin's Cowl on Solar or Ophidius Bathe and swap to Celestial Nighthawk for boss damage. I actually tried this and then had a solar surrounded sword for DPS. I wanted to try a different sword in case people didn't have bequest, but the damage was okay, but the problem is you have to stop DPS to kill trash adds to keep your restoration going or you will die. Where with Liar's Handshake, you can just keep smacking the boss and getting your health back. Plus, Celestial Nighthawk's synergy with Kinetic Surges was nerfed, so it no longer hits as hard as it did before. So yeah, my recommendation is to go with Arc here. I honestly way preferred the arc setup for getting to damage. And finally, the easiest character of all, Bonk Titan. You can just bonk everything leading up to damage. And when it comes time for damage, swap to Pyrogales from your Syntheseps. This will take out the boss's shield instantly, allowing you to start damage. This is super nice because I use the Lament here. Lament heals you as you deal damage, so that is really nice. It makes for a safe DPS phase where you don't need a well and you don't have to worry about extending restoration. You just keep swinging your sword and comboing with Lament. Therefore, it is by far the most consistent in my opinion. I got a comfortable 4 phase with this strat, but a 3 phase is quite possible. But again, you also have to think of ease of use. It is not always about the most optimal DPS. We are going for a solo flawless here, so you want to be safe as well. My recommendation for this dungeon overall is Titan, because personally I find it the easiest and it is the character that I use to do my solo flawless run this season. That video is up on my channel if you want to watch it. So yeah, getting to DPS on Titan is super easy because you just bonk everything and then dealing DPS is very easy as well. And speaking of dealing DPS, you really want a DPS loadout. This way you can gain armor charges while running the runes and then right before you dunk your last vestige, swap to your DPS setup. Or do it when you kill the knight. It depends on the strat you go with. Your DPS loadout will have 3 surge mods on the boots that match your heavy weapon. So, Arc for the Warlock strat, Void for the Hunter strat, and Solar for the Titan strat. Then, have a couple time dilation mods as well, and you will get 22% extra damage for the whole boss fight. Definitely utilize this loadout feature in this dungeon. It is basically mandatory. If you don't, you will add at least 2 phases to each boss fight, which is a big problem for the final boss. Also, I didn't talk about leading up to damage very much, but just have a survivability loadout that you can hold armor charges on. And if you have stats to spare on your build, put them into mobility as you move quicker through the water with high mobility. Heck, even doing a high mobility loadout for the traversal sections is not a bad idea, and something like transversive steps. I didn't do this personally, and it's not mandatory, but it's an option if you want. As for hitting the runes, as I said, practice running the encounter a few times solo first. This will get you used to where all the symbols are. I always drop down the same hole when I go to the runes and usually just run in a circle to hit my symbols. Find whatever strat works best for you and go with that. After Ekthar, we have another traversal. This one is shorter but more dangerous. You do have to deal with the adds here. A sniper rifle or wish ender or both is really nice here. And watch out about halfway through because wizards will spawn in again and they can kill you. Deal with all these adds and then we get to the final boss. This boss fight is a freaking slog. Getting to damage takes forever, so you want a loadout that can reliably do it. Again, this is why I recommend Bonk Titan. You don't have to use much ammo at all leading up to the boss fight which is huge, and taking out the Lucent Hive is quite easy with Titan as well. So leading up to damage, again you want to do a practice run and get the rhythm of the encounter. There's quite a lot to do, but I will give you some advice and tips and tricks. At the start there are 3 orange bar knights in each third of the map. Take them out right away. This is nice to do as then they are just dealt with. Then take out a bunch of adds to kind of clear the battlefield. And after this, get deep sight and check where the symbols are that you need to hit. Here is the biggest piece of advice. After you take out the knight and line up the symbol, look at Samuma. She spawns in a ton of moths each time you line up one of the symbols. You want to shoot these down as she spawns them in. These moths will kill you. I also recommend running one if not two arc resist mods here. And that is another thing. Have a chest piece with triple solar reserves to swap to so that you can get more ammo before a damage phase. For taking out the Lucent Hive, Arbalist kinda sucks. 
Izanagi's burden can one-shot them, and Succession is decent at killing them. Again, it depends on the DPS loadout strat that you want to use. So here's my advice. On Titan, go with Succession, a Solar Primary, and Sleeper Simulant. Sleeper is perfect for this damage, and here is why. It holds 4 in the mag, and you can have 16 total shots with triple reserve mods. So you only need to reload 3 times. Make sure your DPS loadout has a solar loader on it. I also add fastball so I can land a fusion grenade for a vitalizing blast, because this boss can be hard to hit and you don't want to waste your hammer. So for Titan, you can use your hammer super to take out the boss's shield. It isn't as fast as Arbalist, but it works. On the other two characters, they don't really have anything as good for taking out the shield. Warlock maybe with Apotheus' Veil and Fusion Grenades, but back to Titan, Sleeper is great at landing crits, and if you do miss a crit and hit the body, it still does great damage. Also, when you land two crits, Flint Striker procs and you keep your Radiant buff going. And obviously we have Triple Solar Surge on as well. So thanks to Flint Striker and how easy it is to land crits with Sleeper, it's really easy to keep Radiant up. And if you get good damage phases on your Titan, then you can 3 phase with this strategy, which is absolutely great for this dungeon. I'm adding this point in after the script because it's extremely important, but in my opinion, there are certain spots that are easier for dealing damage to Samuma than others, and you can manipulate this. So in the clip you just saw, I really like doing damage from left claw, and another good spot for dealing damage is from the head. So if you get either of these two symbols, then when you're going to kill the Lucent Hive, Pay attention to which symbol is either left claw or head if they're one of your three, and then you leave that Lucent Hive for last. That way you're starting damage in a really good spot to deal damage from. Everyone will probably have different preferences, but like I said, I always have really good damage phases from the head or left claw, so if those are one of my three symbols, I always try to line it up so that it's there. Again, practice this encounter and deal damage from various spots to find out which spot you like the best, and then you'll know when you attempt your solo flawless. And if not, it should be a very comfortable 4 phase. I also tried Leviathan's Breath, but I don't think that is the play here. It is great, but if you miss a crit, then your DPS suffers immensely. For Hunter and Warlock, the strat is a little different. I recommend Arbalist and a Cataclysmic with 4th times the charm and bait and switch. For the Hunter, I mentioned Celestial got nerfed with Kinetic Surges, but that could honestly be a good thing. I would shoot my Goldie and then try to remember to swap to Solar Surge, but sometimes I would forget and lose out on damage. For leading up to damage phase, I would use Assassin's Cowl for Invis. It works great here. And then for damage, like I said, swap to Celestial. So when damage would start, I would quickly pop the shield with Arbalist, then shoot my Nighthawk shot. I nearly 3 phase with this strat, and I would've if I just ran triple solar surge the whole time. For Warlock, I recommend Well of Radiance and Apotheosis Veil for damage. Leading up to damage, I used Mantle of Battle Harmony with healing grenades. So when damage would start, I would pop the shield with Arby and then chuck a grenade or two at the boss, and this would proc her Vitalizing Blast. Fusion grenades and Touch of Flame are the way to go here. Apotheosis Veil is great to run because you can use healing grenades leading up to DPS and then get fusion grenades for DPS. You can also throw a grenade at your feet for the annoying thrall that rush you during damage. On my best phase I did well over a third of damage, so a 3 phase is very possible here too. So with all the DPS recommendations I have, 3 phases are all very possible if you have really clean damage phases, but realistically it's a comfortable 4 phase which is still really good for this boss in particular because she has a lot of health. Another tip is you can hide in the water if you are ever out of restoration or anything, and then you just sit there and wait for your abilities to recharge. If you made it this far, then you don't want to be greedy and die. And if you don't have a Cataclysmic for DPS, then just go with Sleeper. Hunter could use a Blade Barrage to get the boss's shield pretty low I'm sure, and Warlock could just chuck fusion grenades from Apotheos' Veil or use a Dawncore's Dawnblade. But as I said earlier, my recommendation would just be to go with Titan. Sleeper is very consistent for this fight, and the Lament is very consistent for the first boss, and the Titan supers are great for dealing with each boss's shield. Arby and Cataclysmic might have a bit better DPS overall, but they're far less forgiving. If you miss a crit, you lose 4th times on Cataclysmic, and then your DPS goes to shit. Again, Sleeper is super consistent damage. A 3 phase on Ekthar and a 4 phase on Samuma is very consistently achievable with Titan. Again, consistent being the optimal word. I also tried Actium Warrig with Xenophage. It does alright, but the ammo economy sucks. 
So yeah, those are my suggestions to you for getting a solo flawless clear in the Ghost of the Deep dungeon. With the insane artifact mod this season, it has honestly never been easier. This dungeon is a slog of a solo flawless thanks to how long it takes to get to damage on the final boss, so if you can do it in fewer phases this season, then that will really help. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. And if you are still watching, thanks for watching to the end. It means a lot. And if this video helps you get a solo flawless of this dungeon, please let me know down in the comments. It makes my day to hear that my content has helped people. It's what I do this for. So good luck solo flawlessing this dungeon, and take care.